Good morning, Cardinals. It's me, Mr. Ernst. And in this problem, we're going to be looking at 7.2.3, where we are still talking about solving using combination. But today's part two, we're going to add one more thing on how to solve an equation using combination. So let's do a quick review of what we looked at yesterday. The entire reason that we solve using combination is because I can't solve a problem when there's two variables. If I try and solve this for x, I'm going to get x is equal to, subtract y from both sides, 5 minus y. And that doesn't help me at all. I want to know what is x, oh my goodness. I want to know what is x equal to. Um, that's my alarm to go pick you guys up in the morning downstairs. Anyways, x is equal to 5 minus y. This doesn't tell me what the actual value of this is. Uh, this is still an unknown variable. So I can't solve for x when I can't find out what the numerical value of x is when there's another variable hanging out. So the whole reason, the purpose we do combination is to eliminate one of these variables so that I can actually solve for x's true numerical value. We talked about yesterday that two true statements, you can either add or you can add or subtract them and you're still going to get a true statement. So for example, I have two y's that are lined up here, the exact same thing. And when you have the same values, one on top of the other, you can use subtraction to eliminate it. Subtract. For example, I have 3x minus x gives me 2x. I have positive 1y and minus positive 1y, which gives me 0y. And then I have 4 minus 5, which gives me negative 1. So you'll notice that one minus, or y minus y gives me zero y's. I no longer have any y's, so now I can solve for x. Divide this side by two, divide this side by two. This cancels out, giving me just x is equal to negative one half. Once I have this, I can take that value once again, plug it into the original equation. Let's grab x plus y is equal to five. And now I can plug this value in my negative one half, I can plug that in for x. Negative one half plus y is equal to five. To solve this problem, I can do plus one half to both sides, plus one half. That causes these two to cancel out because they're opposites, leaving me with just y is equal to five and one half. Now I have my x value and my y value, so I have um, x is equal to negative one half, comma, five and one half, and there's my answer. Wunderbar. Once again, I use combination to eliminate this y in the beginning so I could find x. Once I found x, I can use that to find y. I'm going to rewind this and clean this up just a little bit. Same thing over here. Once again, if I'm looking at this, my 2y and my 2y are the exact same values which means I can once again subtract. If they are opposite values, so for example, if this was instead of plus 2y, if this was minus 2y, then instead of adding that or instead of subtracting them, I would want to add them. So if you have two opposite values, you want to add those values together. But we don't. I still have uh, subtraction. So once again, I'm going to go through and subtract these. 3x minus 1x gives me 2 x. Positive 2y minus positive 2y gives me 0y's. Those cancel out. 4 minus 6 gives me negative 2. Um, at this point, divide this side by 2. Divide by 2. This cancels the 2 off of my x, leaving me with just x is equal to negative 2 divided by positive 2 gives me a negative 1. Once again, after that, I'm going to pick one of these. I'm going to do x plus 2y is equal to 6. And instead of this x value, I'm going to replace it with negative 1. Add 1 to both sides to get rid of that negative 1. This cancels out. 6 plus 1 gives me 7. And I have 2y is equal to 7. I need to, um, to get my y, I need to, instead of multiplying by 2, I need to do the opposite, divide by 2, divide by 2. 
That's gonna cancel this two out, leaving me with y is equal to seven divided by two. And so that would be my answer here. My final answer is minus one comma seven over two. Cool? Mostly are, yeah, this is most of the same stuff that we talked about yesterday, using combination to eliminate one of the variables. I'm gonna erase all this stuff. Today, you're gonna to be looking at a problem that changes this slightly. I want you to take a look at these two problems here and see if you can figure out what the issue is, what's gonna make this difficult solving this with just combination. If you were able to check these out up here, we had two y's of the same value so that when we subtracted them, we got zero y, it canceled them out. Here as well, we had the same value of y's. We have zero y's when we subtract them, which means they canceled out. But the problem is, down here, my x's do not have the same value, two and three. My y's do not have the same value, two and six. My x's don't have the same value, uh, one x and four x, and these don't have the same value. So if I tried to add or subtract these, if I try adding them, I get five x, and if I have 2y plus a negative 6, that's negative 4y, it doesn't cancel out any variables. I still have an x and I still have a y. If I tried subtracting them, 2x minus 3x gives me negative 1x. 2y minus 6y is the same as adding 6, so that's going to be 8y. It still does not get rid of any variables. So combination is failing me right now. What we need to do here is we're going to modify these equations slightly so that combination will work for it. 2x plus 2y, I'm just gonna copy these equations down. As I'm starting to make these videos, I think it's funny because I don't know if it's just because I'm doing, you know, exactly what Khan Academy does, <laughs> but I swear the more I do these videos, the more I feel like my voice starts to sound, or the way I talk, becomes more and more like the Khan Academy guy, which is funny to me. Anyways, so what we need to do is look at where we can make force my either X values or my Y values to match. So I need to look at multiplying something by a number to make these ones match, okay? So in other words, I know that um, two plus three is equal to five. That's a true statement. I also know that if I multiply every single one of these terms by two, if I double everything, I'm going to once again get a true statement. Two times two is four, two times three is six, and two times five is 10. As long as I multiply everything in the equation by two, I still get a true statement. Four plus six is still equal to 10. And I can use that to my advantage down here. For example, I know two is a factor of six. If I multiply two by three, that's going to give me six. But if I multiply this term by three, I need to multiply all of these terms by three. So I'm going to rewrite my equation over here, multiplying all of the terms by three. Uh, three times two x gives me six x. Three times two y gives me six y. Three times five is going to give me 15. Down here, I'm actually not changing my orange equation at all. It's just going to stay the exact same. So 3x minus 6y is equal to 12. And hey, would you look at that? Now we have matching y values. So now when I go through, these ones are opposites, a positive 6y and a negative 6y. These ones are opposites, so I'm gonna use addition. 6x plus this gives me 9x. 6y plus a negative 6y gives me 0y. They cancel out is equal to, add these two together, that's going to be 27. So my y value is gone. These two cancel out, which means 9x is equal to 27, which means x must be equal to 3. So I couldn't do this beforehand. I could not add these equations beforehand. But once I multiplied everything on the top equation by 3, suddenly they matched back up again. I had 6y to work with. I'm gonna show you this one more time with this equation over here. 
I have x plus 3y is equal to 4, and 4x plus 5y is equal to 2. As I'm trying to, or as I start to copy this down, I want you to think about which of these are we going to multiply by a factor to make the two numbers match? Which one are we going to do? All right, so if you thought that we're going to be multiplying this x to match this 4, then you were absolutely right. I'm going to multiply everything in this by 4. So times 4, times 4, and times 4 to make them all match, or to make my x's match. So when I do x times 4, this becomes 4x. And I can remove this. When I do 3 times 4, I'm going to be left with 12. And when I do 4 times 4, I'm going to be left with 16. Now, where I could not add or subtract these beforehand because there was no matching values, now I have a 4x and a 4x. Because they're the exact same, I can subtract them. 4x minus 4x is 0. 12y minus 5 is going to give me 7y is equal to, and 16 minus 2 is going to give me 14. I've eliminated the x value, so now I can solve for y. 7 times what number gives me 14? y is equal to 2. Cool? So once again, doing this when you multiply by these factors, this can force combination to work if you have kind of matching numbers there. Um, please keep in mind this is not the final answer. y is equal to 2 is not the final answer. I'm not finishing these because all I wanted to do was really show you how this part worked here. I wanted you guys to understand how this area worked, where you can multiply everything by the same factor. Um, I still need to go back and find my x value, so I'm gonna just let me just go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna grab this equation, x plus three y is equal to four. I know y is equal to two now, so I'm gonna replace this three or this two, this y with two. Um, that's gonna give me x plus three times two is gonna give me six is equal to four. And the only thing that's going to work for that, uh, minus both sides by 6, it gives me x is equal to negative 2. So my final answer for question 2 here is negative 2, comma, 2. Da -da. Remember, you always have to have those two answers for a system. Um, please keep in mind, these problems, I don't think any of these problems actually come from the work you're doing today. You don't have a lot of problems, so I didn't want to do one of those as an example because I want you guys to give it the best shot that you can. Most of your problems are going to be like these top ones where you just have to choose whether it's adding or subtracting. And then there's one or two problems where you do have to change it up a little bit, okay? Um, that's it for me today, guys. Uh, good luck on your homework today. Again, if you need extra help, please message me or just see me during office hours on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Bye, Cardinals.